Hey guys, so at the start of this video, I thought I'd edit in the intro movie sequence. You know, every time you boot the game, this thing plays. I, I must have seen this so many times, it's unreal. I normally would put something like this at the start of episode one, but frankly, it's not very representative of the gameplay. I didn't want people watching that and then thinking, oh, what the hell is this weird game? This is nothing like the intro video, but it's cool anyway. And probably what I'll mind for a lot of the thumbnails as the playthrough goes through. But uh, here, check this out. You're only going to see this here in the series, but I promise you every episode I make, I'm watching it. Or skipping it, at least. Powerful gods are all around us. From the heavens, Zeus vanquishes threats to his dominion. Once, the god monster Typhon smothered the earth, choking everything. But the Earth belonged to Zeus, and he would not brook Typhon's rebellion for long. So with all of his might, Zeus launched a ferocious attack. And when the battle was over, an inferno remained. The fire quickly spread, reducing everything in its path to embers, leaving the land barren and lifeless in its wake. What could possibly contain this immortal fire? Finding his answer, Zeus trapped the flames under a mountain, preventing them from consuming the world. The blaze burns to this day, venting its smoldering anger. On the ashes of this molten fire, our mighty city was built. Now Zeus's children, Athena, Apollo, Ares, and their brethren, fight battles of their own, and we are caught in the crossfire. But one god reigns supreme, wielding his power over gods and mortals alike. Hey guys welcome welcome to uh part two of the lp i had all these plans for part two like uh, there's an intro animation video which as you can see i've added anyway um <laughs> there's some like cool stuff in the manual uh, let's ignore all of this for now because we have got to figure out what is going on with the city here and why everybody just lost okay i've slowed down the speed as much as possible so you can see that like the walkers here are like barely moving <laughs> um Looks like you can't fully pause it, but hey, there you go. Uh, I have a very restless, very smelly dog behind me at the moment, so hopefully he doesn't uh, draw my attention away too much as we play here. Okay, so what exactly just happened? These guys are saying they need more culture to evolve, but I don't really understand why when they had a gym. Okay, except hold on. They don't have a gym anymore, do they? Ah, okay, very sneaky. So, we've. This is actually quite good to explain this really early on. So, um. If you look, this is our gymnasium here on the left, and I've got two roadblocks here. The hope being that they would move. They'd go down here on the south, but they haven't gone down on the south. Uh, I think in the code, they're like. I went to game FAQs before recording this with you guys, thinking, oh, they'll have some cool information there. It's crazy. There's like three guides about this game on game FAQs. Three. That's it. Almost nothing. Um, but I think on one of those guides, it said something like, okay, it will always go out of the northeastern corner or something, which is what's happening here. So we've got two buff dudes on this neighborhood, and we really only want the one. So how can I fix that? Well, one way I can fix it is by just, and this is kind of ugly by doing that. Now, that th this house here, it's not it's quite nice and cozy, isn't it? But I think that house is just screwed. I think we can't we can't deal with that house. So here, I've got all of these blocked off. So now I think the guys that come out of the gym will uh, they'll always go down the south. The other way we could have fixed this is by let's put the the, the game speed back up to normal now. Um, the other way we could have fixed this let's actually verify yeah, we're at 70. 
Oh, he's just moving the gym because we've got like all this free space here, haven't we? But I mean, thinking about that, why aren't there just houses here? We could just put houses. The question is, does the healer get? Oh, what? Caledon thinks less of me because I did not send the eight skins of fleets to my sea in time. I, Tidius of Caledon, do not regard you as highly as I did before. I like this. Look how honest and straightforward that communication is. People don't tell you that. <laughs> All right, and the Nemium games begin. All right, well, there we go. Okay, so, look, here's the gym guy. He's coming along now, and they're double evolving. Sorry, everyone. I mean, so there you go. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you don't have a buff guy walking around, you're going to become unemployed and leave. You're not going to contribute in the economy, and you're out. Okay, but there you go. So you see he only went down the right fork this time. His next patrol, he'll go down the left fork. In fact, there appears to be another dude here. I don't know where did where did you come from? Does it send out two at once? This city is like Ajax, head and shoulders above the rest. Thank you very much. Look, they're calling it a city already, aren't they? So that's good. So let's see how our fleece is doing. So I I just edited episode one here. I didn't really make it clear, but in the storehouse you can see what's getting stored, right? Like he delivers the fleece and the fleece appears. Just as when they deliver the food, the food appears in the granary, right? Um. So these wolves, by the way, you might be wondering what's going on with them. Well, if I had built my sheep here, should we do one? Should we have a, a, a sacrificial lamb? Literally? If I put a sheep near them, I think, um, I think eventually they will attack it, like over time. Is that happening now? Yeah, look. I'm sorry, sheepy. I'm so oh, this is quite cruel, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, see, it died. It got hunted. So you've got to be careful of that. And, um, you know, I think we can get hunters and stuff to take them out. I don't think they'll pick your people off on the roads. That would be quite dodgy. But if they do, you know, maybe we could make wall walls and things and, you know, try to resolve the issue of that. So let's see. So these houses have evolved back to where they should be. This is quite a nice district now. And there will probably be a bomb of people coming to live here. Yeah, there are, as you can see. So if I just speed the time up just a little bit here, I told myself I wouldn't do much of that. But here we are. So we just speed up the time a little bit for them to move in. The Nemean games conclude. So we're at 800, 834, 848, 900, 920, 950, 970, 1,000 people. There you go. And that's... Uh, Man, I swear, my mic's, like, all broken. I'm sorry if my mic is clipping. I don't know. I, t I need to keep quiet or something, you know, because it's, it's too hot. Anyway, here you go. Population milestone. A thousand people. People continue to flock to our city, and its population has reached 1,000 for the first time. You can celebrate this achievement by building a commemorative monument. And also, the mission's done. Or it should be. I think maybe at the end of the month it will... It will trigger and, and decide that that's good. So, monuments... Under your leadership, well, Thebes is beginning to thrive. Yet the multi-headed menace still plagues the land. And the city will never be truly great as long as it counts the monster as one of its residents. So, yeah, let's imagine, everybody, that this is the end of episode one. <laughs> and not five minutes into episode two. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, so it's a good city, but there is a Hydra. But it's far away, so, I mean, who really cares? The right? time has come. Ares' multi-headed serpent will not leave Thebes alone, and as the city grows, the monster is bound to cause more trouble. Plus, you could really use some of that marble it seems to be guarding. For the good of the city, the serpent must be slain. No ordinary human can perform this extraordinary task, however. You will need the help of a hero. Okay, so our goal is to get 48 slabs of marble in a single year. And the only way we'll be able to do that is by mining it out of the ground. The only place where we can mine it is under the Hydra. So, the quest is actually really to deal with the Hydra. But, um, it won't technically be over until we get the marble. So, you see the ground here is slightly a slightly lighter shade of white or yellow or whatever we want to call that. That's because there's marble under there. So, this is quite tricky because we need to deal with a Hydra, but we also need to get people there. And it's like out in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? So, we're going to have to build roads and infrastructure and bridges. We're not even on the right side of this river, are we? 
But look at all this. See, we could have just immediately built our city over here. Um, so, what I'm going to do... So, we've got, like, the upper city. Let's call this the upper city. With these two areas here. Now, we need to deal... We need to get Hercules. So, to get Hercules, there's this mythology tab. So, there... There's special buildings called Heroes Halls. And depending on what mission we're on or what's going on, we can get different Heroes Halls. This is the Heroes Hall for Hercules. And if we build it, say, I don't know, here, at the corner of the road, out in the middle of nowhere, frankly. You see the Heroes Hall for Hercules. It says, Hercules can't reach the hall. Make sure nothing's blocking the way. So first of all, that's an issue. But Hercules' hall needs excellent culture access. So, he needs lots of culture buildings around him. He's like a super house, basically. We need special stuff for him. Um, the city needs to have won any Pan-Hellenic game. And we've not won any kind of Olympics or whatever. The city in general needs really good coverage for gymnasiums. And we've done that already. So, that's good with the way we set things up before. He wants another 500 people to live here. And he also wants wine. So, you see, suddenly there's quite a lot going on here. All right, but I do think we can do this in this one episode. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. So first things first, let's make an actual city district near him. And what we're going to do is we're going to give him really good culture. So the first thing is, well, okay, the very first thing, I suppose. Let's do a maintenance office, right? And then let's um, put a roadblock here. And I don't, because I, I, I don't remember. Like people find out how many tiles they move and everything, and they figure it out. But I think that's okay, right? So he's gonna keep everything repaired here. Now I'm gonna build a gymnasium. So there will now be a buff guy that walks along. And again, I kind of rambled about it a bit in the first part. The previous games, you needed a whole other mechanic to connect buildings to the houses. But it just, there's a, what they call it, the global worker pool in this game. And it makes Zeus a lot more beginner and easy access. And it's, it's basically the best of the games that they made, in my opinion, for that. But there you go. So there's going to be a buff guy walking around. Well, what about some of these other things? Well, there's a stadium. Well, we'll deal with the stadium later. So what about philosophy? So there's a college and a podium. So we can build the college. And people will... Go, you know, that's a university, let's say. People will uh, learn about the world. With the full employment, this college is unleashing new philosophies on the city as fast as it can. But on its own, it won't actually do anything in terms of walkers. It, it, people will just go there and learn. So what we do is we can set up a podium, say, over here. And now with a podium... <laughs> Look at all those flabby idlers. Oh, not that guy. Jumped. This they guy. Get in shape and find some of the peripatetic people should find themselves some employment. I don't actually know that word. What did you see? Peripatetic? Uh, Aristotle. We have our Aristotle in the city. Amazing, right, guys? So he will walk from a university. So here's the Pythian games. He will walk from a university to a podium and start lecturing. Now, anything he walks past on his way to do that, they get culture too. So, we could have done that with our houses before. You know, I just put the one gym down. We could have done these, these, you know, these symbiotic buildings. We could have done the two buildings. There you go. So, he's lecturing away there. And people have come to listen. The current lectures run for another 60 days. This lecture is Aristotle's one singular sensation. Uh, is that a thing? I don't know. I assume maybe it is. Aristotle's one singular sensation. Yeah, while Googling, uh, sorry, while editing, I just Googled it. And it is a thing. Aristotle apparently had quite a lot of commentary about the senses. I can't really make heads or tails of it in like a two-minute Google, but it, it is a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someone in the comments can explain. Um, so there you go. So it says Hercules has some access to culture here. Well, let's keep going. So there's drama. Oh, okay. And also, by the way, I mentioned the DLC. In um, Poseidon, which I've never played, I've only ever just seen an, a Let's Play of Poseidon, but in Poseidon, um, it becomes science instead. It's not culture, it's science. And they got different buildings and things. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's just kind of an interesting little twist to it there. So let's go down here. So we've got theatre and drama school, and it's the same thing. So the theatre is like the podium. This thing's huge. It's going to take a ton of people. This one's got a really cool animation when people go to work there. They might not go to work there first without a drama school. So then we have a drama school over here. Okay. So we're kind of, we're building a culture district here, really. Right. 
Oh, and we get a gift of wine from Caledon. Didn't Caledon just say that they didn't like us? Anyway, thank you very much, Tidius, because we needed wine for Hercules. And I was wondering quietly how the hell I was going to manufacture wine. Okay, we th we want 32. We have 16. Maybe he'll give us another gift of it later. Um, but here you go. So check it out. This drama school has all the workers it needs to turn ordinary men into drama powerhouses. And I think we'll see a walker come out of this at some point. I think they're people with like little happy angel wings or something. We'll see in a second. And uh, and they'll walk over to the theatre. Here you go, this person. If nothing is done soon, I'll have my pick of extras. There are so many people out of work. All right, well, there you go. So Gibbs Sonipus is also talking about unemployment. Well, we're using that unemployment up right now. And as this guy walks past towards the theatre, I'm sure the Hall of Hercules will be happy with that. It still says just some access. Well, okay, then, then finally there's a stadium. Now, I think I remember this correctly. The stadium is em is not Empire Unique. That's me thinking about Stellaris there. It's City Unique, okay? So you can only have one per city, I think. And in, in the DLC, it's this crazy thing, I think, where they race horses or something. So, similar here. Gymnasium, the buff dudes will go to the stadium and uh, will have big competitions and things. And I can't think of a better place for that than right alongside Hercules' hall. So, well, actually, maybe a better place would have been over here to force them to walk past, but I think they'll be fine. So with all of that culture, he should be pretty happy. Um, it doesn't look like he cares about appeal or anything like that, so that's fine. Now, we do want another thousand people to live here, so we could put some houses around as well. But if we're going to put houses, let's be careful here. Let's So let's do... Um, oh, man, let's see, I'm going to have to learn the tabs. Well, we're going to want a fountain... And, I mean, the infirmary's pretty gross, but we'll put an infirmary right down there. We'll put a watch post as well. So, I didn't show you this in the previous part, but a watch post, they'll send guards out. Guards will deal with criminals. Let's see if we can click this guardsman. Unrest in the city? Shut your mouth. Things are peaceful here. Shaftocles? That sounds real nice. So there you go. The watchman is now making his rounds. This watch post has all the workers it needs. A full patrol of watchmen is, wa is walking the beat. Okay. You heard, yeah, okay, so there you go. Hercules is happy with this now. He has excellent access. Excellent. So we need to win some kind of pan-Hellenic game. I think basically the more buildings we have that are based on culture, the higher our chance of winning these games becomes. If we go back to this menu, see here it says likely to do okay in Olympian games. Is that the same as pan-Hellenic? Or is Pan-Hellenic specifically when we're dealing with matters of combat or whatever? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all the basic stuff. They won't have food, so we do want to do that. So let's continue on with our wacky designs, shall we? Let's do a little... See, this row might really start screwing things up now as they all start patrolling. See, the temptation might be to put a roadblock here to stop these culture workers going to the market. But if we do that, the market people won't be able to get out to the houses. So, and you might, something might in the back of your mind be formulating now, like how would you set this up? And I'll let you keep chewing on that question and thinking about it. Um, in the meantime, let's grab an Agora with some food. Should we go should we go the whole way with fleece as well and just see what happens? I mean why not, right? And then we'll put some housing down here. Put some housing here. Not there. Let's clear this. You already have too many workers? Yeah, but we need a population of 1,500, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, we never put a tax office down here. So there you can see I've done an uneven amount of steps for the road, so that's a bit unfortunate. But what we can do instead there is we can just say beautification, and we can put like, you know, um, oh, avenues, they're cool as well. I forgot about those. We can do some parks. So quite often, this doesn't look as good when you do the one little row of parks where there's just each little mini square, but um, in terms of like costs and stuff, I think that's an okay way of doing things. So who wouldn't want to live near Hercules, right? 
So let's do that. And that one's slightly offset, which is, again, a bit ugly or whatever, but fine. Technically gives us a tiny bit more space for another small park. So I don't know how much these will evolve or how happy any of these people will be, but let's just wing it and see. Now, the peddler is waiting for new supplies to arrive. So it says up here, food is too distant and fleece is too distant. So what we can do is have another distribution area. This is so I, this is such a weird way of doing the city. You know, I kind of wonder, I think it's a cool thought, like of all the people who ever played this game over all the years, who had the weirdest, like wackiest setup? <laughs> and are we in a running for it? <laughs> but you know, it'd be interesting to see that. If you go to the like the subreddit for impressions games, it's people just um, basically just posting screenshots of their cities, which kind of ruins the magic, I think, when you don't see the animations and stuff. But okay, so we got these storehouses here. Now these storehouses are interesting in the when are they going to get filled up? Because. Surely it's only going to happen as overflow once these guys are filled up. And as you can see, we were overflowed. Look at this huge convoy of wheat here. I mean, the game's not that deep. It could, they could do, like, you know, rotting and all that kind of stuff. So, they don't. so so it's working as overflow, but there are ways you can, like, prioritize storage, I think. And say, no, 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 I want you to go to this one. You can tell them to empty one storage out instead of another. So we'll do that later. So there you go. They're bringing cheese and they're bringing wheat. And that's hopefully close enough. For this lady to now go pick it up. It is, and off she goes. I can't wait to pick out the to finest pick. food for my customers. I wouldn't want them to go hungry. Now this is cool. Unfortunately, I missed it. So this is pretty cool. Um, our what were they called? Homesteads. This is just a hovel, and there's a shack here as well. I, I always like this where you see like a shack, like different levels of evolution together. Obviously, it's a mark of inefficiency and you might not like it that much, but it feels somewhat natural, you know. Anyway, uh, the Olympian Games, that's good. And we actually want to win in those, so hopefully they go well. But these guys are evolved to a nice high level. You can see that these are tenements now and they got that awesome red roof. I was always so thrilled and excited to get the red roof. Basically, all the highest tiers of the housing when you're really getting things going. They'll be, they'll have red roofs. So the tenement is the start of that. We're like in a whole other type of building here, really. Um, so it cannot evolve now until we get olive oil. So olive oil is tricky though, because uh, if you look at the stuff we can build, we carding sheds, dairies, wheat farms. Oh no, 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 we can do olives. Okay, so if we click the grapes here, we've got growers lodges and olive trees. So, I mean, screw it. Let's set this up. Oh, I can't believe the progress we're making here. All right. So, this is now looking a bit weird. So, let's do another nice, like, organic. Well, mm, let's undo that. There is an undo button, as you just saw. Let's have olives over here. Let's have a whole new area. Okay. Man, I used to have all these, like, strategies. Like, oh, I'm going to set this up. This area is going to produce this and deliver to here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. So I'm going to have two storehouses here just, just to soak up a bit of unemployment, basically. I'm going to put a roadblock there as well. I'm going to have a maintenance thing there so that they don't break. So that's storage section, I guess. What, do we really need a storage section? I don't know. Probably not. Um... And then, so, we'll do uh, a grower's lodge. We'll do it in batches of four, right? Actually, I'll do six for this one. Because, again, we've got so much employment. And then these guys need olive trees. So, again, we can plant loads. It's going to cost 300 to cover this whole area in olive trees. I don't really know how this works. Like, if I do just two trees... Like, what will happen? She's going to come out. Hello? Herodotus is sure to record this city as the best and you as its greatest ruler. Oh my god, I always thought of these as women. Always, always, always. I guess they're guys. Albertist. Uh, I don't know Herod who Herodotus is, but thank you for complimenting my great city. So, yeah, they're gonna... Basically, they go over to the trees. 
They mess around with the trees. I feel like it's important in the series here that you guys get to see the full like loop of what each person does because it becomes so chaotic later. All right, the Olympian Games conclude. Our great potato first good news abounds. Our city's contestants won the Olympian Games and have been awarded the olive wreath crown. If our city has a working stadium in four years, we can host our own games. Is that a thing from real life that they would actually give uh, the olive wreath crown? Is that what that's from? Uh, furthermore, you can now build a commemorative monument to honour our fine contenders for their victory. And to top it off, other cities throughout Greece now think more highly of you. So this is huge to win these. I think one of the thing, and, and that's the whole mechanic. I, I've been sort of evasive about it. Yeah, basically it's just a pop-up that can come up. You know, it's like in theme hospital where the mayor comes to inspect your hospital, or, you know, once a year and it might go well or not, however his report is. Or not mayor, just health inspector, isn't it? Anyway, so there you go. So we won, and I think that's what Hercules wanted. So yeah, anyway, look, they come over to the trees, they fiddle around with them, eventually they, they're they lovely trees, and then they like harvest them and bring olives. And then once we've got olives, we need to actually press them as well. Um, but I guess one thing at a time, let's, let's not do too much here. We've got plenty of time here. So it's amazing how quick time goes though with games like this. So now that I've made more trees, you see these guys were all waiting to get out to work as Herodotus well. Herodotus is sure to record this city as the best, and you as its greatest ruler. And again, we need another um, maintenance outpost. Again, I've done that on the arable land. Oh, there you go. He's given me even more wine. 16 wine. He has just done our objective for us. Thank you very much, Caledon. Do you know what? I like you a lot. I'm going to give you a gift. Oh, look at how nice this is. I'm going to give you a gift of wheat because I've got dick tons of it. So there you go. There's some wheat. Enjoy. <laughs> We're a major wheat exporter. Look at all this wheat. We've got so much wheat. So here you go. Look, these are full up already. I mean, Christ, should we do more storage because we've got the employees? So, yeah, look, lots of food being delivered, lots of water being delivered. See, I like this setup. You know, it's kind of like a mixed mixed kind of vibe you know where we got houses and we got other stuff here these people are competing now at the stadium it takes a ton of employees 45 employees current competitions run for another 58 days the event right now is jumping and javelins so hold on let's see what the current show is sophocles uh oedipus rex um this theater is currently entertaining the masses and this is teaching Utopia in a few easy lessons. I'm sure there's so many wry tongue-in-cheek jokes going on here that are just going over my head. Right, so she needs fleece. I don't know what my assistants are complaining about. So parcels are feather light. This storage district, let's build these here. So let's try this thing out. Okay, like for example, we can say what we accept or not. So we can say don't accept um, wood or marble. You can tell them to actively get olives for this storage station. You can tell them to empty the olives out. Um, so, like, if I want fleece, I can tell them get fleece, okay? But if I do this, I don't actually know how this works, whether it will start emptying the other place, and then my other housing districts are going to struggle. So I'm just going to leave that, actually. But there you go. That's how that works. Um, and you can see, we, we, we got a long distance here. we got a long way to go to get our people's stuff along so let's move this and do this like this I guess and um because I do I do want more fleece fleece is important it's really nice that basically everything we need for big houses is here right away now that what that maintenance worker has come all the way up here and sorted them all out all on his own so that's good. I didn't need a shed. I've got a sh whole shed here just for like a tiny little thing. But that's fine. So those guys are wandering a mile away. I didn't need them to do that. Here, look. Sheep. There's sheep right near your house. Near you. Or whatever. Now, if we keep spamming, here it's saying, you know, when I misclick, must be placed on the meadow. Eventually, you'll get a different error and it will say you need more carding sheds or something. And that's how you know. But here you go. Here's the guys with the crooks. Oh, there you go. Thanks for the gift. Hello, Potatofus. I, Tidius, have received your gift of sheaves of wheat. We don't really need the item here in Caledon, but thanks all the same. 
Okay, yeah, we don't really need it here either. But there you go, so, um... So that'll be fleece. Now, do we want this to be an industrial highway right next to where people are living? Probably not. So let's just... You know, you'd be surprised. You might have seen on episode one, you might have been like, oh... There's loads of space on this map. How are you ever going to make a city that fills it all? It fills quick. So there you go. So they got their own highway. Now here's something interesting. Um, if I put some parks next to this path near the palace. Let's put some more down. Did that work? Yeah. Okay. Did you see the path just evolved? The path itself evolved. And it looks like nice and paved and well kept for. You know, it's not like these industrial ones that are all ran down and haggard. It looks nice there. So the higher the appeal in an area, so you see the appeal actually here is very appealing. It's getting golden. It even, you know, beautifies the paths and things as well. And a very easy way to beautify the hell out of an area. So say this shack here, right? Some buildings have reduced the appeal because of this infirmary. It is with your monuments. So, uh, we got the population monument for having a thousand people. We got an athletics monument for winning one of the games. We've got a happiness monument because everyone's really happy because I'm playing on easy mode, basically. So, uh, any of these monuments that you place are an explosion of appeal. They make things very, very, very appealing all around them. So, even though we have an infirmary here, this thing is overwhelming all of that. And so these guys can all evolve. These guys aren't evolving because they don't get any culture. Because I guess the gym guys get bored right here and then turn around and leave and go the other way. Uh, so it feels bad. Sorry, you guys. But here, look. You see, all the paths have looked pretty here now. And so there you go. So um, we can use these monuments. They're pretty overpowered, to be honest. This is one of the things I think that makes the game a little bit easier than maybe some of the others in the series. Um, because... Uh, there's a lot of appeal stuff to play with, and when you can just throw a bunch of monuments, it's it sort of resolves that for you. So there we go. So we are at over 1,500 people. We have won a game. There you go. We're done, right? He has excellent culture access. Um, we have 32 amphorae of wine. Hercules is needed to do battle with the Hydra. So I'm going to send for Hercules. And because he's got such a home that we've built for him, such an amazing place, uh, he's going to come. Uh, probably by the end of the month. I, I assume he will enter the city down here. Look, there's more people emigrating here. And uh, and so he can fight the Hydra for us. Now, I don't remember how this is going to work. Is he just going to swim? Because we need to figure out how to build a, a bridge. Here we go. So, a water crossing. This isn't very good, but it is a bridge of a sort. So, you can only build water crossings at very specific places. It's one of those weird things where it feels like a game engine limitation, but they kind of design for it. Like, you need... They need to be parallel, right? On on either shore. If you don't have an even connection on both shores... I am a Hercules, and I'm ready for a challenge. What have you got? Okay, so, hello, Hercules is somewhere. At the same time, Caledon wants some fleece. So, I'll give him, why not, ten skins? I like you guys. You gave me all that wine, I'll give you the fleece, we're friends. So, Hercules arrives in the city. I'm Hercules, and I'm ready for a challenge. What have you got? I hope it's something worthy of the strongest man alive. And the Isthmian Games begin. So, the Isthmian Games are, like, philosophy games. Our city's wisest thinkers will soon leave for Corinth to participate, uh, held in honor of the great Poseidon. Honor, prestige, and, and a wreath of dried wild celery await the winner. So, where is Hercules? There he is. So, I don't know what you guys were expecting. <laughs> okay, it's from 2000. It's not that stylish. It's also a bit dated for 2000. When you look at those other games I gave as an example of in uh, episode one, you know, they came on a long way. But anyway, here, check it out. This city is unsurpassed. Thank you very much, Hercules. So, not only can you get heroes, and you remember in episode one, it said you can get monsters on your side. I don't remember that as a mechanic, but we'll see that, I guess, as it goes forward. Uh, you can get the gods themselves to live in your cities. And I don't know if they're all like this, but they function like walkers. 
So they will like bestow powerful enchantments and stuff on the specific, you know, domiciles that they pass. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, all right, Hercules. Are you going to fight already or do I need to tell you to fight? Let's see what he does. <clears throat> and once he's killed the Hydra, we can get the marble to finish the quest that this episode is about. So let's see, what's he doing? Kaladin regards me more highly. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sorry that I was slow with the other thing. There you go. So he went to his home. And now he's just wandering. Ah, there you go. Off he goes. This city is unsurpassed. Thank you very much. So will he swim? Let's see. Does, it, does he have a swim animation? He seems to be going off the bottom. Oh, there you go. Okay, he's on a raft. This city is unsurpassed. This city is unsurpassed. Okay. He's just wading on through all this stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, I thought we were at the bottom, but we aren't. You've done something someone doesn't like very much. I was taking bites. Our gifts to you. This is the Hydra. Uh, I thought you got some special text when they were fighting. So here we go. Here's the, the epic battle. There's not too much to um, sort of engage with here. It's just going on, you know, ideally we'd be off focusing on something else. But there you go, the Hydra has been slain. And the marble, there you go, Hydra has been slain and your people are rejoicing. The marble is now open for us to get. So let's deal with that, shall we? Thank you, Hercules. And Hercules will live with us now. I think he'll just wander around. Now, there is military stuff. You know, there, there are wars, people will fight us. Um... So I guess what makes sense here is to do this and to block. No, no, no. We really we don't need culture. Get, look, we're getting really remote here. What's this? Eleusius suffers from a famine. Listen, Potatifus, I, Acrisius of Eleusius, have a problem and you are going to help me out. My city is suffering from famine and I demand you send 10 food within six months so that I can feed my people. You better do what I say, runt. Oh, I was so happy and like, oh, I wanted to help out, you know, but now he's being mean to me. I'm going to postpone and see what happens. The Isthmian Games concluded. The most noble Potatoes, our philosophers, completely befuddled by the other contestants, lost the Isthmian Games. Why don't we have that nowadays? Or do we? It's just so unpopular, I didn't realise. Uh, if we were more devoted to philosophical p pursuits, our contestants may have fa fared better. Try building more colleges and podiums. Yeah, maybe. Alright, yeah, look, look, look. As much as you want to bring the bro dude philosophy to the other side of the river, don't worry about that for now, my friend. Let's just get a, a road going. So here, if I try to build a road through this wilderness, you'll see that I can't. So we have to clear that. You clear that in the same way that you clear a building. Just draw a big square. Kind of feels like maybe there, there could have been an idea for more of a mechanic or something with that, but in the end they didn't do it. Um, so anyway, so we'll get a nice bridge up here, and you notice we're on, sorry, a path up here, and you'll notice we're on farmland. We'll do another thing here. Oh, and that's annoying. That's kind of the way the game goes sometimes. All right, whatever. No, 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 let's, let's do it nice and efficient. Oh, I did click undo, I swear. It doesn't seem to have uh, worked very well. Here we go. Right, do that. Nice and slow. There you go. Okay, um, so now we've got a road here. So let's build the road all the way along. Up like so. We can weave it through here. And again, we get more trees, so... Again, it's kind of a mechanic, but it's also sort of just draw a giant box like so. It doesn't even cost much, like even in the harder difficulties. I don't think there's ever really a moment in this game where you're like, oh, I wish I could do more, but... Actually, do I need a path that goes all the way there? Or do they just figure it out on their own? I don't need to build the building on that. But whatever, look, we built a path there. Okay, so we're going to have a marble district, I guess, over here. So real quick, roadblock for any walkers. The walker specifically. So let's look as well here. Um, unemployment is at 
So actually, that's a really good value in terms of city stability, but I want to expand, so we might need more houses. I don't know. Anyway, so we get that. So if we go to industry, we've got workshops, olive presses, and raw materials, a masonry shop. So he loves me. Thank you very much. So I'm going to build some masonry shops here. I'm going to build six of them. And it says employees needed. So we're going to need another housing district as well. Or to evolve these houses. And evolving them should be pretty simple. Um, if we just get fleece down here. Now these guys are producing more fleece for us now. So look at all this fleece that's over here. So really what we want to do is move that. So I'm going to say to these, get fleece. No, let's go even closer to the market just so that we're sure it'll work. So let's say get fleece. And let's say get fleece. I think when you play this game really well, um, one of the tedious things is like every time you put a storage station down, you kind of toggle all of the rules for all of the things like, Okay, yeah, I don't want this, don't want this, don't want this, don't want this, do, but I do want this, you know. And it's a lot of clicking every time, I think. You know, if there was a modern version of this game, you know, obviously it would have better controls, lightning engine, stuff like that. But I think uh, little things like that would probably be easier. But here we go. So look, these guys with these wheelbarrows. This maintenance... Oh, that's just the maintenance office. There you go, Nicaracus. He's going from the storehouse to the storehouse, so he's grabbing this fleece. And he's going to empty that out completely. But hopefully these guys at this place can figure out how to get here. So, like, for example, actually, what I could just say with all this fleece is empty. We don't want any fleece ever being stored near this area. It's too far away from our houses. So if we just say empty, that might be good enough. Oh, there's some homeless there. Not sure what exactly they're upset with. Or where they've come from. Are we running out of stuff here? No. What did you guys want to evolve? That, again, fleece. So that's a thing. So. Oh, we didn't even put a fleece station down there, though. So hold on. If I put... Okay, I've got an idea. We can put a, uh, a storehouse here. And we can say... Well, we don't have to say anything about that. That's fine. And then we can just supplement our carding sheds. This is probably overkill here. Alright, he wants more food. You should know better than to ignore me. Even though the famine at my city is over and my people are eating again, I'm not going to let you get off the hook that easily. Send me the food I requested soon. I might overlook your insolence. Oh, this guy. Alright, fine. Whatever. Okay, so I'm going to put a thing there. Yes, my city needs more workers. I. So here's where, once the employee pool thins out, buildings will only have a certain amount of people working in them, and they'll work only at certain efficiency scales. But okay, so... So that probably wasn't the most important thing. What's most important is to give these guys a fleece vendor. If these guys can get fleece, because it's close enough, it says no goods. If they can get fleece, all of these evolve, we get a ton more employees. And the employees can all work in our new masonry area over here. Here we go. In fact, they're going to... Oh, we missed it a little bit. So they come out, they swing the pickaxes. And then look, they get these oxes, right? And the ox bring the... Um, let's see their dialogue as well. My mouse has been very weird. Oh, I guess the oxes don't really have dialogue, do they? And that makes sense. Well, whatever. Anyway, they bring marble. And then these guys start breaking the marble. And then once they've broken the marble, uh, they'll deliver it in a wheelbarrow to in a wheelbarrow to a storehouse, which ideally would be on site. So let's do that. And again, I know, I know, we need more, we need more workers. I know. But hopefully, let's check this again now. There you go. She's buying the uh, the fleece. Brilliant. Okay, so that's a quick way to give us some more population. So now they have fleece, so the market guy's distributing it. And so now people will move in here, and they'll work in all these new places that I just uh, set up. 
So one thing you want to start keeping your eye out on now, once you've got, once it's beginning to mature a bit, is anyone standing around with a cart and nowhere to deliver it? Because that means you've got some kind of backlog or something, you've got to start figuring things out, giving things away, whatever. So a gift of sculpture from Caledon. I, Tidius, wish to give you all this sculpture. So this guy's got a bunch of advanced materials, wine and all sorts of stuff. So he's given us that. I don't know when we'll use these, but look how huge these are. These are always cool to look at. They're massive. See, if I had specific storehouses, horse, statues, sculptures, um, like sell off somewhere else, that'd be good. Maybe we have to empty these out. But, um, oh, this guy thinks less of me. Yeah, I was too slow with the food. I don't really care. So the statue, the sculptures, you can't, they've got this white shroud over them, makes them look a bit like ghosts. I didn't really get when I was younger. I thought they were marble sculptures, just hadn't been chiseled to completion yet. But no, they're bronze sculptures. And you'll see when we start manufacturing them, you use a lot of bronze to manufacture them. And, um, and they've just got this shroud over them. It's just a cloth that conceals what they actually look like. And you might be thinking, well, why is that there? It's because there's a bunch of different things you can use these, and they're enormous, as you can see, these massive sculptures on. It's to do with the gods. Um, so depending on what you build them on, the sculpture will technically be something else. So it's kind of like a super, super position of sculptures. Anyway, here, look, Hercules is visiting all these guys here. Just wandering around, because we built a home for him. We're very happy with that. So, uh, so check it out. So now we've got marble. And we're filling up with the marble. And I really wish I could remember how we see our main objective. See problems. Oh, we don't need to see problems. Requests. See more information. We see your assets have fallen, but we're doing okay. Well, it's very hard for us to lose on easy mode. <laughs> if I do, um, you know. I'll blame the game. It won't, it won't have been my fault. <laughs> yeah, I don't know though. It, it, there is a quest log somewhere and it tells us, okay, this is what you want to do. <clears throat> oh yeah, we can rotate the camera with these buttons here as well. And just click the middle. Oh, here you go. Oh, it's on the bottom left. Review episode goals. So 48 slabs of marble in one year at once. Our best is zero. But so far we've made 24 marble. So I might actually need some more masonry shops. Looks like one batch, one wave did 24 there. Now I don't know how the counting works there. Does it, does it arbitrarily pick December 31st as the cutoff? Or does it actually wait 24? Is it constantly counting? I mean, I don't know. Anyway, here you go. So check it out. So these guys, employees needed. I know, I know. We're about a balance though. 32 workers needed. This city is superb. I hope I live as long as Nestor to enjoy it. And I hope you live as long as Nestor to rule it. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's becoming quite an impressive city, isn't it? Let's look at an overview in a minute. So they'll go through. So one thing I was always very curious about with this game, and to be honest, I still don't even really know the answer. But it's like, okay, so they're digging here, right? They're swinging their pickaxes away. And it will actually make a hole. And then later they'll dig even lower down. It'll become a proper quarry. Like this is just a little cut in the ground for now. But it will become a really impressive quarry. And I guess what I'm wondering is, does the an how did it must stop at some point. You can't just dig infinitely down. Like the graphic must end. Can you exhaust the whole quarry as well? Can you run out of marble? Because I don't think it's that kind of game. Like the deposits don't expire. You know, your cows won't eat up, sorry cows, your, your sheep or whatever, they won't eat up the arable land and it's gone. It stays there. So, but this animation sort of suggests otherwise, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it does run out eventually. Um, I really couldn't tell you guys for sure. I did the stupidest thing, I recorded episode one, went to, did I tell you guys it's just after New Year's here by the way? Um, kind of a new year, new ideas, one of the reasons I'm doing this. Um, but uh, yeah, I just recorded, here we go, so look, they're, they're making more cuts here, you see. I think they do the whole thing and then they go down. I got a yogurt and I thought I'll eat that, but then I just ended up editing and now here I am again and I've just been playing with the spoon in my hand the whole time. This is quite a nice passive game and I, I literally have both hands off the keyboard there for a second. 
So there you go. So they go through. The serpent is gone, yet worries remain. Ares was fond of the serpent, and he cannot be happy that you have arranged for the serpent's death. Athena, the goddess of warriors, crafts, and wisdom, has arrived to collect some of the serpent's teeth for some strange and wonderful purpose. Maybe she can shed some light on how to earn Ares' favor. Okay, so there you go. So we've got all the marble. We probably have way too much marble now. Uh, so we've looked at heroes. I think the next uh, mission is going to be about gods. Um, so let's click proceed and figure out what we're going to do. The wise goddess Athena offered this advice. <clears throat> Ares is indeed going to be upset by the loss <laughs> of that serpent. Here's this thing for serpents. Single-headed, double-headed, dunder-headed. It doesn't matter. He loves them all. And he really liked how the sun glistened off all those heads. But do you know what Ares likes almost as much as serpents? Big, big sanctuaries built just for him. He likes to conduct what he calls ambush practice in a sanctuary's twisting holes. But to most it seems like he's playing hide and seek. If you build a sanctuary for Ares, the god will be thrilled to have a new place to practice the art of war. And he'll forget all about the serpent. He'll even take some of the slain serpent's teeth, sow them in the earth, transforming them into fiercely powerful soldiers called Spartae. These soldiers will do your bidding and help to protect Thebes. Heed my advice, mortal, and good luck. Okay, so it looks like the first god is Ares. Uh, we're going to build him... A so if you thought the hall to Hercules in this episode was big, if you thought the palace was big... You ain't seen nothing yet. These things are ridiculous when you're dealing with the gods. So that'll be the next part. Um, I guess I'll click to the city. Because I do need to save. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and uh, I'll see you for the next one very soon. Take care now. Another quick reminder. Don't worry, I'm not going to do this in every outro. Uh, but if you're not watching in the playlist... Uh, there should be a link in the description, and if I make any bugs or errors with that, let me know, guys. I'll reorder them and I'll, I'll fix them up. <laughs>